On December 25th, an aeroplane was sighted off the coast of Barcelona. It was flying empty. Investigation of this case reached into the highest circles, and the scandal was very nearly responsible for the fall of at least one European government. This motion picture is a fictionalized reconstruction of the events leading up to the murder and to the appearance last Christmas morning of the empty plane. <laughs> Jacob Zook? I'm sorry, but you're going to have to talk to me. We've got to get out of here. Look, if we don't start moving right away, you're going to be killed. Some dough, couldn't you? How would you like to earn 500 marks? Earn? Or even a thousand. We could go to my hotel. No, that's not good. He might find us. We go to another hotel. I'll get you a fine room with a nice bed and lots of warm, big, thick, heavy blankets. Uh -huh. yeah. And who are you? Santa Claus? I am the one who's going to keep you from getting murdered. Oh, I know you, Zook. You're an old jailbird. Uh, just out of stir. Well, let's dope push it. The world's forgotten you. I wouldn't give you a thought if I didn't have to. If my own life didn't depend on it. I'd better tell you my story. Who are you? My name's Van Stratton. Till just a little while ago when they caught me, I was running American cigarettes in Italy. A lot of us were doing it after the war. So what's this got to do with me? I'm dying. Nothing, but will you listen Leave to me? Leave me alone. Will you shut up and listen? There's hardly any time left. You've got to get this straight. I'm going to save your miserable life for you. You're going to have to understand this story, see? It all began one night last spring in the harbor at Naples. Millie, that's my girl, she was asleep on board the boat. I'd been in town. I was just coming back along the docks when suddenly I see this character with a peg leg. like he was in an awful hurry to get away from there. Then a couple of minutes later, 
I see this other guy. At first, I thought he was drunk. Trouble? Go get a doctor, quick. Too late. Why, doctor? But the police. Try to keep them away. I, I don't want to spend my last few minutes with a lot of cops. I don't blame you. God, you didn't do it. Of course not, but we can't let him bleed to death. No, mademoiselle. It was another who stabbed me. He got away. Go, go, go! Go see what's happening. I must have got whoever it was at night, you. Seems like they're trying to shoot it out with the cops. What is your name? Van Stratton, guy. I am Braco. You call me Marcel this way. I spend my last few minutes among friends. All right, old man. Take it easy. I'm with you. You're with me. After all the friends I've had, you that I've known a few minutes. You're the only one. I want to give you something to show you my thanks. It's all right, fella. <laughs> I just happened by. I got a boat here. Your papers. I'll go on board and get it. We'll come with you. Come here. Come here. Please, I must tell you this. Remember, it is a secret. Give it only to your friend. This cigarette is a contraband. I'm jail for you, senor. Jail. Real smart cop. Okay, so you found a cigarette. This girl has no connection with my business. Come on, Braco. What were you saying? What? Is he dead? What do you think? Braco was whispering something. Yeah, what was that message he gave you? Yes, Braco was talking to you. What, what was, was it? Sense? It was just a name. He was dying. What name was it? Arcadin. Gregory Arcadin. There was another name, too, that Braco had whispered to Millie. But I, I couldn't ask her what it was. How about the cops had me? Millie? What was people? Millie was my girlfriend at the time. I already told you. Brocco I'd never even seen before. As to what his racket was, or how he got himself stabbed, or why he should give me Gregory Arcadin's name, I hadn't a clue. So why should this Brocco do you a favor if he didn't know you before? I don't know. Maybe he got some kind of a sympathy for me. He was dying. Well, I'm dying, but I got no sympathy for you whatsoever. I don't know you either, but I'm doing you a favor. I'm going to save your life. Mm, so all of a sudden you're a doctor. Will you tell me, please, how you figured to save me? You are going to find out, Mr. Zook, if you'll just try keeping your yap shut for a minute, and your mind, if you have such a thing, and what I'm trying to tell you. Like I say, I had to do time for the cigarette smuggling. They confiscated my boat. I was broke. So when I got out, I had nothing else to do but look around and ask questions. Oh, God. 
He had a villa near Monte Carlo, a castle in Spain, one of the biggest yachts in the world, and at least three passports. But who he really was and where all that dough came from, nobody could tell me. Well, Millie wasn't waiting for me at the prison gates. But I traced her down to Joanne Lapin to a nightclub where she was doing a bubble dance. We got paid to let her off for that party. Which party? The party, naturally. This season a party means just one thing. Gregory Arcadi. So Millie got next to Arcadi already. She was a bird brain, but at least she had something to go on. That, that other name that Bracco whispered to me. So you've been to Arcadi's party. How'd you make out? Well, I must have missed 50 other girls out there on that boat. Yeah, I hear he's sailing it back to Spain. Next week, he's giving a big society ball. Why don't you try to get yourself invited, and then we can... To a society ball? On the yacht, stupid. All right. Look. Try and go on that cruise he's taking to camp. Then maybe if you can get close to him, we can sort of throw that other name at him. That's the trouble. You forgot it, you mean? Well, you see, I, I couldn't hear very well. Oh. And right after that, uh, what's his name? Bracco died. So I couldn't very well ask him to repeat it. Okay. Okay. Now look. You tell Mr. Arcadis that you have a friend. Somebody named Bracco. Mm -hmm. Don't use my name. Oh, Guy, be careful. You just tell him that if he's interested, a meeting can't be arranged. Look, it's different for me. I'm a girl, and he's Will a man. Will you please stop drinking? Well, I can handle it. I him. hope so. There must be an opening for a bright young man in some company that our card in happens to control. Stranger things than that have happened in sure. big business. Come to think of it, who knows how Mr. Arcadin got started? Started. I didn't even know what we were really after. Some of that are card and money, of course, but how? Shake them down? What about? Some name, a guy whispered to Millie, and a Millie forgotten. I not only knew it was crazy, but the closest I could even get to our card was, was that yacht of his. The Raina, it was called. After his daughter. She's quite some dame. <laughs> A real look at it. Well, my, she would need to be. Yeah, Cotton thinks everybody's after for his dough. And he's wrong about you. All I wanted was to use her to get close to him. <laughs> that was at first. <laughs> and now it's love. Would you let me tell this in my own way? Raina's been to some high-class schools in America, but she's, well, tough. No illusions about anything. Well, then there's a boyfriend, a long drink of cold water called a Marquis or something or other. The Marquis of Atlee? But I don't think it's anything serious. Uh, how come she's not at his party? It isn't the kind of party you ask your dog. Is that the telephone switchboard back there? Yes, right over there. Good. Excuse me, darling. I seem to be wanted on the telephone. Awful bore. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Would you like to dance? We have No, I'm sorry. I... Well, your friend's got to be some time on a long-distance phone. How do you know Bob's taking a long-distance oh, call? Oh, I would know better. I put the phone call in myself. You're going to be stuffy about it, or shall we start dancing right now and save some time? <laughs> With her British boyfriend occupied in the telephone, Raina and me were just getting nicely acquainted. Then we got the bad news. Mr. Arcad. He was waiting for her in the car, and the message was that it was getting kind of late. Yes, but how did he learn that you were here, and so quickly? He runs the greatest private spy system on Earth. Yes, I know that, but are I going to see you next? I'm leaving for Spain in the morning. Are you flying? In father's plane? No. Oh, driving yourself. Getting an early start before dawn. All right, sir. That sounds perfectly frightful. There he is, in the car. Your father. Better get back inside. I say, but look here, old I'd girl. I'd rather he didn't see us together. Oh, all right. Oh, excuse me, old man. Oh, okay. so sorry. Hey, that's uh, quite a coincidence. I mean, you're going to Spain tomorrow. I'm going to myself, you know. Small world, isn't it? Yeah. Hi, Pops. How was your party? It wouldn't be so tough to get stuck on a doll like that, though, or no doll. But romance wasn't any part of my plan. Plan? The truth is, I didn't have any plan. I was just knocking myself out, chasing something. I didn't have any idea what it was. At daybreak, there I was in front of the Arcade and Villa, hitching myself a ride to Spain. I threw Raina a line about how my own car just happened to break down there. And would she please give me a lift? But just then, I noticed some character spying on me. Oh, that? He's one of my father's secretaries. Huh? He has all kinds of secretaries. Some of them double as vice presidents. That one's a masseur. And there's Rico. He's in charge of ladies' telephone numbers. But that's something I'm not supposed to know about, of course. Well, they all seem to be very interested in who it was that was bumming a ride with the boss's daughter. It was quite some ride at that. 
She really made time. And so did I. Well, that's a Catherine Spain for sure. Thanks for the lift. You're spending the night here? I want to try and talk to the local hotel and to give me a bet. I'll show you, Waiter. It's either that or... Or what? Oh, we develop a sick headache or a leaky carburetor or something like that, and we'd be forced to spend the night the other side of the border. Uh-oh. Here comes the ogre. Ogre? What's that? The ogre's my nickname for Bob. Oh, your father. Didn't you ever read any fairy tales? No, not many. You know, fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Now, that's an ogre, huh? Some kind of a bogeyman. <laughs> if you meet my father, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, you mean when I meet him. That's him up there. Uh, yes, he flew to Tangiers this morning. Now he's joining me here to get ready for our famous mass ball. That's not till Sunday night. Good. What's good about it? Gives us almost a week. For what? Getting better acquainted. Don't tell me you're staying on. I'm going to your party. <laughs> I don't believe it. Why not? You know your guests personally? Of course not. Oh, you know me. Do I? Maybe not yet, honey, but you're going to. <laughs> What's so comical? I like your being tough. It's just too bad you're such a cornball. Father's secretaries. The who? And please stop uh -huh. smoking. On account of those carriages and the hood? I thought the masquerade wasn't until Sunday. It's a religious procession. Uh -huh. They're penitentes. What? If you keep quiet, I'll explain it to you. Uh-huh. Look, some of them are there, but others have chains. Oh, I thought you were looking for me. I just spotted somebody down in the crowd I ought to say hello to. The girl in the sweater who was waving to you. Millie? As a matter of fact, I think she's down here to get on that cruise your father's giving. She's more a friend of his. Well, she's his type. Yeah, but, uh... Thanks for dragging yourself away from your new girlfriend. I'd yeah, ask what... Yeah, you were in town at the local hotel. I'd ask what she's got for you that I haven't got, except I happen to know the answer. A couple of hundred million dollars. Will you please be quiet? What gives her those crazy clue cluxers? They're penitentes. Yeah, no, but what are they dressed up like that for? They're doing penance. It means they're sorry for their sins. They must be awful sorry. Well, did you get on that cruise yet? What do you think I came to Spain for, to see you? Look, Millie, I've been thinking this thing over. I think maybe we ought to forget it. Guy! Coming! Forget it. You're going after our Cardin's money in your own way through his daughter, aren't you? Well, you better watch your step or I might decide to start talking. I mean it, Guy. It won't be about Bracco or anything mysterious like that. It'll be all about you. Are you by any chance trying to threaten me? I'm just telling you to leave her alone. What are you doing here? Just waiting. Not right under the castle like this where we can be seen. Yeah, that castle's kind of hard to get away from. I know, and the town's swarming with secretaries. I'll phone you as soon as I get away from the ogre. Look, why don't you take me up there, introduce me to him, and be done with it? Because we're having fun, and I'd like it to last a few days. Cornwall. You win! <laughs> I knew it. What do I win? Me. Come on.
lives back there. Checking up on you, huh? Yes. Treat you like he's a jealous husband. If father had his way, I'd never get married. Well, you don't have to worry about that, honey. Oh, what do you mean? I'll make you a promise. As long as I live, I'll never ask you to marry me. Gee, thanks. Hey. Tarragon know that you're here with his invitation, sir? Well, don't be dreary, Rudy. Of course he does. I ain't accepted to fetch you, old boy. Oh, thanks. Uh, now, this way. Now put your mask on. That's a form, you know. Well, anyway, where's the ogre? Beg your pardon? Our host. I would like to see him. Well, you can't mean that. Why not? I've been trying to keep him from seeing me. What do you mean? Well, ever since I was caught taking Ryan around without official permission, I've been persona non grata. Oh, all right. All right. So it's a masquerade. It isn't Halloween, is it? What's with all these crazy Frankensteins? Now, look, old boy, you don't understand. All these people are supposed to represent the paintings. Now, some of us have come as the visions and monsters. Goya. Who? You know Goya. Glad to meet you. Talking with our hostess. Oh, uh, the young Miss Arkadi. Of course, I know, Raina. Uh, we won't introduce ourselves. This is a masquerade. You've known her long? Raina? Oh, we've met a few times. All sorts of people are always trying to meet her. A position that's natural, of course. Fortune hunters, adventurers, you know the type. Oh, sure. <laughs> I thought you would. Come here, to show you something. Might be interesting. You know where we are, don't you? Shut the door, please. This is her bedroom. Oh? Huh? Raina's bedroom, you understand? Well, it's a very beautiful room. This whole place this is. This is a... her bed. A pillow. I left this here for her to study. You can look at it if you want to. Confidential report. Has my name on it. Oh? Yeah. Yeah, my name has been Stratton, Mr. According Hickory. to that dossier, you were born George Streetheimer. Streeter. My father's name was Streeter. Your father's identity does not seem to have been established. Go on, read it. Be sure to leave it for Raina after the party's over. The party seems to be over already, Mr. Hokata. Who got this up for you? Private detectives. It may seem a considerable investment to make for a mere jiggle or a petty adventurer. You see, my daughter is very important to me. There's nothing I would... So I'm a petty at. adventurer, am I? And what about you, Mr. Hokata? How do you think it would look if someone got up a dossier on you? What are you two doing in my bedroom? One moment, Ray. I want to be very sure I understand what your friend here is talking about. 
Yeah, that's quite true. I ran cigarettes, even some gold once. But what about you, Mr. Almighty Gregory Arcade? How about if somebody got up a confidential report on a subject to you, huh? All the dirt, I mean, from Bracco on down. I'm ashamed of you. Yeah, it's just about the idea. I mean, Father, do you really think this is the way to... God, come back. striking one. God! Don't worry, you're safe. I'm sick of jails. There's a law against murder. What did you say to our card? I haven't seen him. Not here in Spain. Did you tell him anything about me? No, why should I? He's got private detectives on him. You put him on to him, did you? No, God, I swear I had nothing to do with it. Both of you wanted to break things up between Rain and me. Well, now you succeeded. Where are you going? Just leaving, that's all. Am I going with you? I want to get as far away from here as possible. I never once talked to our card about you. Oh, and another thing. I, I remember that man. You mean that other name, that woman's name that Bracco told you about? Am I going with you? Now, don't get smart. All right, all right. It was, it was Sophie. Sophie? Sophie what? Well, that just it. I can't remember. It was, it was something Russian. Hello? Oh, I beg your pardon. I was told I would find uh, Mr. Van Stratton there. Will you put him on, please? Secretary. Mr. Arcadi. Mr. Van Stratton. Mr. Arcadin is calling you. I'll put you through. Mr. Van Stratton, I'm prepared to talk business with you. I said I'm prepared to talk business with you. My car is downstairs. I'm waiting. <laughs> Arcadin is waiting for you. Thanks. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to tell you about a scorpion. This scorpion wanted to cross a river. So he asked the frog to carry him. No, said the frog, no, thank you. If I let you on my back, you may sting me, and the sting of a scorpion is dead. Now, whereas the scorpion is the logic of death, for scorpions always try to be logical. If I sting you, you will die. I will drown. So the frog was convinced and allowed the scorpion on his back. But just in the middle of the river, he felt a terrible pain and realized that, after all, the scorpion had stung him. Logic, cried the dying frog as he started under bearing the scorpion down with him. There is no logic in this. I know, said the scorpion, but I can't help it. It's my character. Let's bring the character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir, but Mr. Arcadi would like you to wait for him on the terrace. This way, please. me back here because you wanted to talk business. Your business, Van Straten. You told me you knew so much about me, you could fill out a dossier on me. Well, you know how it is, a fellow gets around here. Where? Where did you get, Van Straten? Naples. I'm not the only one who knows about Bracco. He's dead, but he told us something about you. Something you'd like kept quiet. It was knifed. Yeah, and then there's Sophie. Knifed? Knifed by you? Do I look like a killer? No, you're simply a fool. I will not ask you your price because you have nothing to sell. But still, I'll make you an offer. I'm going to give you something to sell, and then I will pay you for it. Come on. You've tried to threaten me with a secret which does not exist. Now I'll make you a present of a real one. The great secret of my life. Come in. My secret is work here. It's in private. Now tell me, if I really had something to hide, what do you think it would be? Well, uh, take a guess. Well, there is something. There has to be. Why? Well, a 
there isn't. Well, how come you never let yourself be photographed, for instance? Oh, well, I've been photographed, but usually I break the photograph. I'm also head of the photographer. I'm a strong man, Van Straten. How old do you think I am? How would I know? I don't know either. See, that's my secret. You think I'm crazy? No. I don't think you asked me back here to try to help you guess your age, either. Uh, you've heard of a thing in the army called... intelligence check? Some kind of an investigation, isn't it? Yeah. These army people are thorough. They look under the wallpaper, they turn up the carpets. Which army? Your army. Yeah, I did have to reside back in the States in 42, so I got a polite invitation to join. You know, greetings there. What would you in the army? I'm interested in some proposed air bases your army is building in Portugal. And you want the contract. I get it. You're afraid one of those investigation deals could wreck it for you. You want to hire me to help you cover up a few little items? You are informing me or asking me, Mr. Van Straten? Mr. Arcaden, I'm just guessing. But now I'll ask you something. What makes you think you can trust me? I think you will do what I tell you. You're a fool, but not a silly fool. And I am not ungenerous. Not ungenerous? That means you... $10,000. Tax-free, of course. You can have it in gold in Liechtenstein. Make it 20000 You're a poor businessman, Van Straten. You're bargaining before you know it's for sale. What I don't know, I can find out. Make a 50. I am hiring your specialized knowledge, your ability to move about in the underworld. Underworld? I want you to make an investigation and prepare me a report. Report? A report on what? Gregory Arkadin. All about Gregory Arkadin. I'm serious. It's me I want you to investigate. Well, what is it you're so afraid they're going to find out? Van Straten. On my mother's grave, I swear to you. I wish I knew. And you figure that if I can't smoke it out, the army boys won't be able to either, huh? I'm going to tell you a story, a poetic little story. It's winter of 27. One night, one snowy night, I found myself a young man in Zurich. I had nothing, nothing. Only the one suit I was wearing and the wallet in which there were 200,000 Swiss francs. With that money, my fortune was built. You see, I promised you this was poetic. Well, well what? Who was she? She, who was she? Isn't the question at all the question is, who was I? Okay, Mr. Arcade, and I'll buy it. Who were you? That's just it. What happened before the winter of 27? Where did I come from in my one suit? That is my real secret. And you are the first man I ever told it to. I do not know who I am. Amnesia. You put it pitch as bad as you claim. What do you mean as well, I look, claim? You don't have any memory of what happened to you before 27. Right? So what makes you so sure your name is Arcadi? Huh? Well, maybe it's Arcadine or Arcadini or Arcapopolis or Smithy. Don't be a fool. I know my own name. Who says so? I say so. Yeah, well, who are you? He just told me you. No. I'm paying you to find out. So why does our card and stick in your mind? Maybe maybe it's the name of a cough medicine. Maybe it's somebody you knocked off at a 200,000 Swiss francs. You think that's how I got the money? Well, maybe you stole it. How do we know? Dying, I'm alone, Raina. Why is the door locked? I want to see Guy. What's going on between you two? Mr. Van Straten is gone. He has left the country, Raina. You will not see him again. That is a condition, of course. She will not see you. And above all, she must never learn that I've given you this job. She might imagine that, that I'm paying you off. Wasn't well, that just what you're doing? You know, at first I thought it was something else. I rather thought you were blackmailing me. Here's the character. Where did 
I stand now? Was he paying me off or lossing me up? Why should he think that I could turn up something that he couldn't even remember? Well, the answer to that was a long way off. I had to do a lot of traveling and ask an awful lot of questions before I learned the truth. From Helsinki to Leopoldville, Brussels, Belgrade, Beirut, Torino and Trieste, Marseille and Mogador, I talked to every crook who'd even been around in 1927. And a whole lot of other characters besides. Even some of the big money men, financiers up in our gardens league. I claimed there was a newspaper man, but even that didn't always get me in the door. Sir Joseph is not well enough to give interviews, but out of respect for Time magazine, that is your magazine, isn't it? Sir Joseph has consented to make the following statement with the understanding that it is not to be quoted. Gregory R. Cardin is one of the shrewdest of all adventurers in high finance and certainly the most unscrupulous. During the last war, I had occasion to make inquiries into his past. In another epoch, such a man might have sacked Rome or been hanged as a pirate. Today, we must accept him for what he is, a phenomenon of an age of dissolution and crisis. As to his place of origin and the source of his first capital, the most painstaking investigation has shown that these are quite impossible to trace. Millie, out on that cruise, was keeping in pretty close touch with me whenever she could. Yeah, with a few other good-looking dames as fellow passengers. Millie was junketing around all this time with our card in on that yacht. What are we doing in my cabin? Would you prefer to come to mine? That'd be funny. You said you want to be alone with me. That slipped your mind. Oh, yes. Yeah. The message. You better have a little more champagne. It's not me that wants to talk to you. It's a friend of mine. Guy Van Straten. You know everything, don't you? Only what I need to know. Rocco, for instance? Oh, my business. Oh, sure. Guy told me. Money changing, new nation. Some of the guns he sent to the Reds in China didn't even shoot. Is Van Straten a communist? <laughs> Are you kidding? Then what's he complaining about? Nobody's complaining. He's uh. just doing that crazy job you get. Hey, you didn't answer my question about Brocco. Not to mention that then. When did you talk to him last? Brocco was killed and murdered on the dock in Naples, Italy. No, I mean, when did you talk to him last? Seems you were pretty chummy with some nasty collaborators. Easy sheep. Oh, some champagne. They trusted you with all their money, those Nazis, to invest in South America for after the war. They didn't even ask for a receipt. I've heard that. Now their families can't even prove the money's there. And then, and then there's Mussolini. All those roads you built for the fascists in Ethiopia. Bad water, not enough food. Guy says more than a hundred of the men died. You know, you're kind of cute in a weird sort of a way. After a person gets over being scared of you. Why'd you grow that awful beard? To scare people with. When'd you grow it? 1927? You know something about that year Van Straten's discovered something? We know where you came from. That's more than I do. Warsaw. Huh? What's that? That's why Guy wants me to see today is when we get to Tangier. Who? Today. Oh. He's an organized smuggler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he organizes smugglers. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> He knows all the crooks in all the world, and he's Polish. What's that got to do with Warsaw it? Warsaw is a city in Poland. I was aware of that. You see, Guy went to see your tailor in Zurich. My what? <laughs> the tailor made your first suit of clothes when you came there. He's dead. You probably never even noticed the cutter, but he remembers you and the label in the coat you were wearing when you first came in the shop. Label? The tailor's label. Your suit was made in Warsaw. So that's where you came from. Guy couldn't get into Poland now. He'd never get a visa. Awful lot of Poles left home these last few years. <laughs> Refugees. They went everywhere, all over the place. That's what Guy's gonna do. <laughs> Look up an awful lot of Poles. But where? Just wherever you say, Mr. Arcadi. <laughs> everywhere. All over the place. <laughs> Now, remember that Bracco had made us a present of two names. Arcadin and somebody called Sophie. So I asked around about this Sophie, too. 
Well, the first nibble I got on that was up in Copenhagen. In a flea circus. Why come to me? I am a legitimate entertainer now. Please watch your smoking. I am only interested in my fleas. And now we are rehearsing. Besides, I have to get ready for a show in a few minutes, so I cannot give you much time. Oh, please, 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 the fleas don't like it. Who likes it? Will you at least try guessing? Have you ever seen a football game? Alley hoops. Between alley hoops. Alley hoops. Educated fleas. Now, oh, here's the kickoff. Alley hoops. No. Alley. Alley. Alley hoops. Ah. Uh, Ali hoops. Ah, now here is August. He's the goalkeeper. Pick it up, August. Put it in the right position, August. That's right. Ali. Ali, August. Ali. Ali, August. Poop. <sighs> Why would a man want to escape from Poland? In the past few years, my country has offered its people a wide variety of incentives for moving elsewhere. Oh, wait a minute, Professor. In your day, you wanted the best con men in Europe. It's not so loud. I don't see any reason why I should lower my voice if you're not going to offer me a... That cooperation. Feeding time. Come on, Professor, think back. A police case in Warsaw involving a woman called Sophie. <laughs> Couldn't you find another Paul Destadeus? That contraband fellow. Yeah, yeah, Tangier. Why not try him? Nah, he's too young. There's nothing a type like that doesn't know about crooks. Oh, crooks. <sighs> he has them jumping around for him like my fleas. Only the fleas are smarter. I got a friend doing Tangiers this week. She'll see today. Oh, come on, Professor. What about Sophie? Sophie? No. A type like that, if she's alive, she's legitimate by now. Well, what makes you think she'd go straight? Simple. She was intelligent. Did you ever stop to think why cops are always famous for being dumb? Simple. Because they don't have to be anything else. Crocs aren't the worst people. They're just the stupidest. The fleas of the world. And murder? My friend, after 20,000 years, murder is still a business that's mainly in the hands of the amateurs. Expensive. But my Japanese cameras. I can't help you. Von Straten? Has he got a new boat? This is not about business, Mr. Tadeo. We just want you to do us a favor. I never do favors. We only want a little information about Poland. Yeah, I'll never give in. Poland. This won't cost you anything. Do you know of a fence in Amsterdam called yes. Borgomir Trebich? Trebich? We're not going to Amsterdam. You and Van Straten? No, I'm not with him anymore. I'm on a sort of a cruise. Enjoy yourself. Trevich. I'll remember the name. Thanks, today. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> Uh, 110 gilden, my dear. <laughs> well, you can always fix it with a weeny bit of tape. Why not try to stick to the subject? You were going to tell me about a woman called Sophie, remember? Mm, Sophie, my right, sweet. She was quite a girl. Uh, not that I remember her personally, only by reputation. And with the telescope comes a leather case. Yeah. What happened to her? Where is she? Ah. Uh, where is anybody? Well, you know she's still alive. 
Well, if you don't want the case, I can sell you the telescope without it. But then, of course, the price would be a wee bit steeper. You haven't answered my question. You haven't bought my telescope. Yeah, but I will. I will, Mr. Trubbage. I'm going to buy it. Now, what were you going to tell me? <laughs> Those girls. <laughs> Those girls were the ruin of Sophie. Girls? Ah, Hildegard was more stood out. What girls, Mr. Trebitch? Imagine, my dear. They were hired by the police to pose as members of Sophie's dancing academy. Huh? What dancing academy? Well, uh, perhaps you'd be interested in a lovely aquarium for your tropic <laughs> fish. Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> I already got a telescope. You haven't paid for it, have you? Still, we can always discuss price, can't we, my dear? Now, look, about this dancing academy, I'm buying information. <laughs> buying means that I'm prepared to pay. I make it a principle never, never to give information, even about people who are dead. Uh, I mustn't get a reputation for being indiscreet now, must I? Especially in my profession. No, what you are buying is a telescope. Oh, fine. Looks as if I'm also buying an aquarium, but if Sophie's dead, I can't see what difference it could... Who said she's dead? Well, nobody says she's alive. I seem to remember she got away from the police when they broke up the gang. The gang? Oh, come on, Mr. Trebich. What did the gang do? White slavery. Warsaw well, was the center of that, my dear, before the last war. Oh, my poor baby, you don't know a thing. Why, half the flesh that was run into South America from Central and Eastern Europe came right through Warsaw. <laughs> Wait, I've got something for you. No, I don't want to buy anything else. You know? will buy this one. It's an idea. Well, those young girls. What girls? The girls I spoke of have acted as special police agents. Well, it just happened, my dear, that one of them turned up here during the war, uh, during the occupation. What's her name? Oh, come on, Mr. Trubbish, I'm paying you for this. And she was quite a heroine of the resistance movement, connected, one imagines, with the British. I spent the night here in my little shop in 42, and we, ah, we got to talking about Warsaw. You know what we Poles are. Um, well, the Baroness could tell you all about Sophie. Oh, fine, Mr. Trevich. Where is this Baroness? The Baroness Nagel. Well, okay, but where does she live? And here is the telescope. You see, I believe in giving value. Value? This thing doesn't even have a lens. Well, what can you expect? A 200 gilder? Two. 200? You can always find the lens. Ah, Gusti! Yanni, Mittagessen! Ah, if you can pay me in dollars, I can offer you a very good rate. Oh, gilder. Well, of course, there will be the usual charge for breakages. Breakages? Oh, my beaded curtain, I can perhaps restring. Uh, I may be able to mend up my alligator, but... You've absolutely ruined the pretty aquarium, my dear. Uh, well, you remember the name, Nagel, hmm? N-A-G-E-L. Nagel. Nagel. <laughs> Is that all I'm getting? Sir? Baroness Nagel. Hmm? B-A-R... I can spell Baroness. Now, you just tell me where I can find it. My dear, I swear to you on my heart, I haven't the remotest idea where the Baroness is. Oh, what happened to her? Я не знаю, что. Барона Нашель очень давно не видел. Those in Hilletek, they didn't get a word of the tell over the Baroness of Monaco. Never, the Baroness never. She wouldn't have gone back to Poland. Not the way things are now. Kai Lando. There you go. Here she was decorated by our people and the French. Wonderful girl. There you go. I think she's working in Paris. She's at one of the big dress houses. Pure, I think. She's a vendeuse. A what? A saleswoman. Good. I got something I want to buy. Well, she lives here. Of course. I remember you. You are the gentleman who was here the other day. Well, I'm sorry, monsieur, but the Baroness wouldn't be in till late tonight. She has a dinner appointment. Oh, thank you, monsieur. I think it might be with that gentleman who brought her the beautiful flowers just the day after you were here. He was a big, tall man with a beard. Yes, with a beard. Come on, you. Criminal and the world in Warsaw. Hmm? It's true that for a year or so, I did see a little something of that sort of thing. It wasn't as amusing as you might think. Criminals aren't ever very amusing. It's because they're failures. Those who make real money aren't counted as criminals. 
This is a class distinction, not an ethical problem. It's to crime. I suppose you want me to tell you about Sophie. Sophie. She was in those years the most important criminal in Poland. However, we did manage to put her out of business. We. Oui. There were several of us, young girls. And I won't pretend to you that we were not rather thrilled at being part of the secret police. Also, in my case, our family needed the money, badly. <laughs> we were sort of wooden ducks, how you call it, a decoy? You mean you were used to collect evidence? Oh, it was a rather nasty business, really. The gang masqueraded as a dancing school, where the young ladies went to learn the tango. The victims, of course, ended up in South America. I was glad, actually, to be useful in breaking it up. The leader got away. Oh, Sophie's been living abroad ever since, in great style. Sophie, what was her last name again? She married years ago. Well, what's her married name? You are inquisitive. <laughs> Before telling you that, I ought to ask my employers for permission. Your employer is Baroness? You're a vendeuse working for a dress shop. That means you sold a dress to her, right? She's a good customer. And she's been in your shop more than once? Every year, when she comes to Paris. Comes from where? That is something one mustn't tell, I should think. I thought they were very strict about people with criminal records in Argentina. Not Argentina, no. Huh? And not Chile either. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't imagine you can trap me so easily. I'll bet you a couple of hundred dollars I can trap you, Baroness. Let's make it 500. It's more sporting. Three hundred. That's sporting enough. Here. Write Sophie's married name at the address, and then we'll compare notes. Aha. Uh -huh. First, we'll have some more gypsy music. And you'll buy me another bottle of champagne. Then afterwards, just for the fun of it, you'll show me your money. As you wish. No, no, I really can't. I hate people who sell information. There was somebody else only last week who wanted to know the same thing. What? Ah, about Sophie. Ah, uh, digging into the past. It's really too disgusting. Here, take it as a gift. After all, what's that woman to me? You can't object if I settle a wager. There, you see what I've written? <laughs> I didn't come within a mile of it. It was Van Straten who approached you. Yes. I'm a fool. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Baroness, a fool is a man who pays twice for the same thing. Until I learned about it from the Baroness, I hadn't even realized that Arcadian was in Paris. But I didn't bother to see him. If he was trying to do my job for me, I'd have to hurry up and beat him to the finish. Before catching the plane for Mexico, I stopped by at my hotel. There still wasn't any word from Millie. I hadn't heard from her in weeks. No, sir. There's no message. But there is someone to see you. Going to ask me up for a drink? Come on. Guess we have time for one. Oh, yes. And there's somebody else waiting for you. You've been avoiding me. Why? I hope it isn't because of my father. No, I've been away. Belgrade, Zurich. Why all this jumping around? Job. For my father? Funny, I thought I caught a glimpse of him here in your hotel. But that doesn't make sense, does it? You don't trust me, do you? That's really why I haven't wanted to see you. You mean you need to be trusted? Funny. So does father. Quite funny. Simply because nobody in their right mind could trust either one of you. What are you doing in this man's room? That's my question, isn't it, Father? Yes, and I think I'd better ask it, too. What are you doing here? You can't have known I was coming. I didn't know it myself. I have business with one Isn't it? And you gave me your word. His word. He gave me his word. He wouldn't see you again. Oh, really? And he swore to me he wouldn't take money from you. How cheap did you come? Well, Van Straten. No, I'm asking the questions now. Fifteen thousand bucks. Well, you wanted the truth, didn't you? 
You can save us that old-fashioned melodrama about your innocent daughter all alone with a wicked bachelor in his hotel room. I only came back to get my bags, and I'm on the way out of the country. There's a price tag on every man. Yeah, what's yours, Mr. Arcadin? 200,000 Swiss francs? You know, that was the basis of the great Arcadin fortune. Well, maybe $15,000 could be the basis of mine. You imagine I'm going to give you that dollar? Man needs money to make money, Mr. Arcadin. I wouldn't dream of asking your daughter to marry me as long as I'm broke. Marry that you? That dough he started with figures to be earned in some dirty way, too. I'm going to find out how. And when I do, who knows? Maybe I'll wind up in our card in myself someday. You hear, Raina? That's the sort of man you think you're in love with, a blackmailer. Who says I'm in love with him? I was hired by your father to do a little checking up for him. Investigations like. Well, it was his idea, not mine. That doesn't sound much like blackmail to but me. But you aren't in love with but it him. It does rather look as though he's been taking money to stay away I from I never promised to do that. Now I'm going to see you whenever I can, job or no job. But you're going away again. It's just a short trip. If I'm lucky, it may be the last. You're staying in Paris, aren't you? I'll see you here on my way back from Mexico. I wish we could all settle down somewhere for just a couple of minutes. Frankly, I'm fed up with living the life of an expensive gypsy. Raina, there's no need to discuss this with Van Straten. You know, your life can be whatever you want. We only came to Paris because you... Because I said I wanted to. And that was because I hoped to see Guy. See, Mr. Arcadin? I'm afraid things are getting just a little bit out of your control. Out of his control. <laughs> well, that brings us to Mexico. To Sophie and Oscar and his accordion. First thing that I... So there is somebody in this story you finally recognize. Oscar and Sophie was married? Yeah, well, now she got a new husband. A retired general of the Mexican Revolution. Oh. Oscar's playing his accordion at Sophie's restaurant. In hips. And blackmailing her a little on the side. Blackmailing Sophie? <laughs> that would take a nerve. Ah, Shut up! What is it? I heard that car. Sophie's car? Sophie's in Germany? Will you please get dressed, nice Mr. Zook, and I will tell you the rest when we are somewhere that is safe. I don't want to hear. I don't want to tell. I hit what I know to myself. It's healthier. Oh, you don't want to talk. That's what Oscar said. Ah, Oscar, he's a drug addict. He'll never be well. I almost made him well. I got him out in the water. Took away his needle. You hired me to play my music for a pleasure cruise. <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> I don't know for how long we've been out on this boat, for how many days I've been with Without your heroin. <laughs> Ain't that the stuff you, you use? Didn't throw it away. You'll get your junk when you start to talk. I won't talk. I won't tell you Well, anything. we got to go through all this just once again. You were married to Sophie. I still am. And now she's got a new husband, some big shot here in Mexico. You mean she was never divorced, is that it? So it's bigamy. You mean Is it bigamy? I won't talk. Okay, Buster, we'll just keep here till you do. What is it? You want me to tell you. I want you to tell me about Sophie's gang. All about it, everything that happened. You could kill me first. I may have to. I don't know how long it was I had to keep him out there, drifting around in a chartered fishing boat, but finally he spilled everything. So, even though I hadn't managed to get to Sophie, now I knew all about it. And their connections with Arcata. But back in my hotel, there were a couple more surprises waiting for me. Your passport, please. These will be returned at the airport. Tossing me out of the country, huh? Well, you better give me a chance to pack. There is someone in Mexico City who'd like to see you. Who's that? The Senora Jesus Martinez, the wife of General Martinez. So, you know the lady? Well, I don't exactly know her. Never mind, senor, you will soon. Sit down, mister. We're putting you on the plane in an hour, but I'd like to hear first what you've got to say for yourself. Sorry, but I really don't have much anything to say for myself, Madame Radzwitz. Senora Jesus Martinez. 
This here is my husband. I guess Oscar told you that the general, my husband, isn't he? Yeah, but don't think I'm trying to embarrass you, Senor Martinez. Don't Martina. do anything to me, Mr. Smarty. I'll let you in on a secret. Oscar I was never married to. He's old now, and he's... He's talked himself into it. And man's got to keep a little pride, and he doesn't earn much playing the concert in a poor little fellow, so I allow him to blackmail me. Not much. Just enough to keep up his self-respect. And you. I'm the one that's got questions to ask. I You're think. the one that's getting tossed out of the country, Mr. Smarty. People torturing other people. That I don't go for. Poor little Oscar, why do you have to pick on him? I wish you'd try to understand. I'm involved in a serious investigation. Investigation? Why not even be the people that's minding their own business and not hurting other people? Me, I'm married. I got a legitimate business. There's nothing against me that is not all done and over with a long time ago. So, what are you after? I just want to check a few names with you, that's all. The men who worked for you back in Warsaw. You got all that from Moscow? Yeah. Arthur Badzi, Hershelis, Jacob Zook, Andre Block. Block was the one with a peg back. I saw him fished out of the harbor in Naples. Is this true? Seems he'd come on a freighter from the Balkans. He jumped ship. For some reason, he knifed the guy called Bronco and then tried to shoot it out with the cops. If he knifed this, uh... Brock. Why did he then use a gun? Why? I never thought of that. So you got the names. What else do you want? I want you to tell me about Arthur Bodzi. It's a van, or... Basha. Arthur... What about him? I'd like you to tell me what you thought of him. I was crazy in love with him, mister. What's all this to you? Well, you see, I work for Arthur Bodzi. Of course, he has a different name now. Sure. Gregory Arcadian. You knew that? Years ago. Chato, give me those photograph albums. And you never said anything? But you must have realized what that information was worth. Money. Money I don't need. But even if I did, mister, that kind of money I couldn't use. Not that Vasha don't owe me. He does. 200,000 Swiss francs? It was in gold. He borrowed this money? If that's the way he remembers it. Give me the old one. Come here. Oscar. I guess he must have grown his beard after he left you. He had a beard when I saw him in Monte Carlo. But I knew him. That was years later. Sitting right next to me, he wasn't. He didn't know me. Why should he? Not that he hadn't changed, too, of course. Why the beard? I don't know. I think maybe it had something to do with his daughter growing up, but I wouldn't know either. This is even the first time I've heard about the child. Who is he married to? Somebody in Berlin. Yeah. She died when Raina was born. Yeah. The only time I saw him afterwards was at night in the casino. When he got up from the game and moved over to the roulette, somebody whispered. There goes a famous Gregory Arcadi. So that's how I found out what happened to my boyfriend and the money. I was going to talk to him. Hello, Vasha, I was going to say. Where's the money you sold from me? Where's the gold pieces I had stored away in my old pair of drawers, Vasha? Now that you have a great Mr. Arcadi, maybe you could afford to pay me back. But I didn't. There was that old heart, lonely kind of look in his eyes. I thought of all the fun we had together. Besides, he was winning. I'd been playing his numbers and I was winning too. 
a whole lot more than what she took from me all those years ago. Even figure in the interest. So, I thought to myself, here he's gone to so much trouble to be somebody else. Why should I spoil it for him? I had my money's worth 20 years. You can go now, mister. And when you see your boss, tell him from me he could live well enough alone. You mean he doesn't have to worry about you? Why does anybody worry? He's a billionaire with a new name. So, Oscar takes dope. Let them both have what they need. It's your deal, darling. <laughs> yeah? Mr. Arcadi is calling you. Okay. How are you coming, Vastraten? Couldn't be better, Arcadi, and I finally got the goods on you. What? The dirt, all of it, from before 27. Can you prove it? On the long-distance telephone? Come and talk to me. Well, I, I want to talk to you now. You understand? No. I'm in <laughs> you, you didn't know I was on this side of the ocean. It's your first trip to Mexico. <laughs> it's mine. Need to be treating you pretty good, huh? And this part of the hotel is private. They keep it for me. I suppose you own a hotel. Well, as a matter of fact. Okay. Uh, what did she say? Chiquita says she wants to go water skiing. <laughs> it's an amusing sport. I'd like to try it myself. Yeah, you look real cute in a pair of water skis. Oh, you think it'd be funny? I'll take your picture. You can judge for yourself. Mr. Arcadi would look exactly like Neptune. Who? Neptune. He was the god of the sea. <laughs> yeah? Did you know that? No. That's what I thought. The boat a couple of mugs. I'm leaving tonight. Sell our Mexican pesos and buy Chilean. Remember what I said about copper? Oh, and uh, get Chiquita a little present, remember us, please. Check. I found Sophie. Sophie? She's married money, but a character known as Oscar is her real husband. He's blackmailing her. Oh. I'll put all the details in my report. Never mind your report. But I don't mind it. I'm going to get paid for it, remember? Tell me what you know. In the old days in Warsaw, Sophie had nine men working for her. Four are dead, two are behind the Iron Curtain, so they can't make any trouble. Oscar's here. That leaves somebody in Germany called Jacob Zook. And one other. And this other man? What's he up to? He says he wants to go water skiing. Any proof? Not until I take your picture. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot your camera shot. Stop trying to be funny. I think it's funny. You're born near Tiflis, your real name is Vaso Atabazi. I think it's funny. Who says that's my name? Oscar, so it's so Are crazy. you trying to tell me in all seriousness that I belong to this gang? You belong to Sophie. I... This man in Germany, can he identify me too? Zook's in a safe place, Mr. Arkadin. He's in jail. Speaking of jail, a gentleman waiting to talk to you. Well, tell him I'm busy. I think you'd be wiser to see them. They're from the police, and they want to take you to your plane. Oh, and one thing more. Yeah? These things you claim to be finding out about me don't speak of them to my daughter. I have your word my on word? it. My word? What's that word to you? Perhaps a man like you can't realize what it is to have a conscience and no memory at all. Do you imagine it's pleasant to be ashamed of something you can't even remember? Attention, please. Attention, please. We all pass it as proceeding. I want to go to Germany, too, you know, for Christmas. But of course, the ogre wouldn't let me, so I'm off to Spain to wait for him there. Your father's going to Germany, too? With checking up on me, huh? Well, you know, Bob, he can't help it. Counter espionage, mystery. After all, he's a Russian. It's the breath of life. Hey, wait a minute. What makes you think he's a Russian? Well, I'm his daughter. 
doesn't know himself. <laughs> he really doesn't. Is that what he told you? Well, what about the famous amnesia? Amnesia? Look, in 1927, your father found himself alone in Zurich with no memory at all. He didn't know who he was, <laughs> where he could... What's so funny? <laughs> Almost 30 years. Oh, really, chum? I never heard of amnesia lasting that long. <laughs> So the whole gag about him losing his memory was just a lie. Naturally, it was a lie. The only true part was the money he stole. And all he really wanted from me was to see how much I could find out about it. Mm. Well, I got a little further than he expected. Yeah, 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 you got the miracle. How did you find me? The jail. The warden told me they let you out because you were sick. Yeah, it was Christmas. Christmas? They wanted to save themselves the price of the coffee. Now listen to me, Sook. What I'm gonna tell you now happened today. I was on my way here, when suddenly, I realized I wasn't alone. All right, sir. Yes, okay, what do you want? It's very interesting to learn how you were that new. Knew that. Uh, well, a man died right in front of me. Well, the Italian police sent us a photograph of the victim. So this is an old case. It's already settled. But why don't you just let me go? Mr. Arcadin's giving a party. I gotta go. Arcadin? Gregory Arcadin? Right. Is it open, Mr. Yeah, it gives you a Gesellschaft for house today. It gives you a ganz falsche Richtung. Yeah. But you're not on your way to his hotel. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. I just changed my mind. Uh -huh. um, um, we'll bring the photograph to Mr. Arcadin's uh, apartment. Entschuldigen Sie vielmals, wir wünschen Ihnen noch einen recht schönen Abend. Ja. Er sagt, have a nice time at the party, please. Christmas, Merry! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Mr. Merry Christmas. Tell him! Thanks. Yes, thanks. I know all about it. What's his name? You know as well as I do. Jacob Zook. He's gone. Gone? You mean escaped? No, his time was almost up and he's dying, so they let him out. He lives in a rooming house in Sebastian Plot 16. He's dying. There's nobody left for me to worry about. Except you, of course. Well, I'm not the only one. What about Sophie and Oscar? distance, I want to place a call. It's urgent. I'll wait at this number. The call is to Mrs. Sophie Jesus Martinez of Mexico Julie, City. And here have that so even for the other game. He says a gentleman downstairs asked him to deliver this. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Yes? You've got the photograph. Oh, you haven't looked at it yet. Please do so, Mr. Van Stratton. As we say, there's reason to believe that you knew the murder victim. <laughs> Yes? How about that call of yours? What that about call it? to me. That call? 
Oh, it appears that Mr. Van Stratton wished to speak personally to a certain Madame... Jesus Martini or Martinez. What are you calling so before? Just a hunch? Well? Madame Martinez is not available. She appears to be deceased. Perhaps Mr. Van Stratton would like to speak to her house. Yes. Yes, I certainly would. She wasn't in on it with you. She didn't even know what the name Sophia Bracco meant. What? Yeah, Sophie. Sophie knew all about you, who you were. She'd known for years and she didn't even care. Live and let live. That was Sophie's motto. Why didn't she tell me about this before? I didn't know she was in any danger. That should have been obvious. And <laughs> surely can keep it down? Bracco and Miller? Sophie and Oscar. Now there's only Jacob Zook. Just one left. Sure you aren't losing count? To you, Van Straten. been knocking off everybody that might remember that crummy little secret is. I'd say it was all because of Raina. He's gone right off his rocker at the thought that she might find out about him. Well, you're the next to go. He's saving me for the last one. I've done all the dirty work. The only way I could save myself is by saving you, hiding you. That's why you're so important. You're the last living member of the gang. Gang, shmang, I belong to lots of gangs. Yes, so who wants that you are the bus? So now he's got to run the name, he's rage. So go ahead, get some of the money away from him. But for this, you got to drive me out in the cold. He may be here at any minute. I gave him your address. You mean that was yet? before I knew he was the killer, Schmelay. You got to prove it. Prove it? Yeah. A big, important man like this, that's something he shouldn't do. Get up. Oscar and Sophie were found dead in a ditch in Mexico City with their throats cut. I just found that out on the long-distance telephone. <laughs> go ahead and laugh. I'm not laughing, I'm coughing. Well, go ahead and cough. Die if you've got your heart set on it. Look, I'm young. I don't want to wind up with a knife in my gut. Boy, I'm going. Nobody could bother me. I ain't scared, but you are. So better stop running. Running? Where to? It's a big world, mister. Not so big when our cotton's after you. Besides, he owns half of it. So what do you want with me? You knew him. In Warsaw. You're the last one alive that did. Now, as long as I can keep you alive... He's here. He's coming up. We gotta get out of here and hide. Hey. Mister. Come on. Mister. Give me a blanket. You're coming with me. There must be something you want. Something yeah, you dreamed of all those years in jail. But this late Christmas Eve, how could you go home? Well, what is it? Where are you going? Out. we got to get out. But this way ain't out, mister. Which way? That way. Listen, whatever you want, I'm going to get it for you, man. So, if I have to make robbery, arson, or murder, you're going to have it. At least let me get my pants. What do you want with your pants? 
Come on! It's your personal sense of decency. Also, it's cold, mister. How catch me a chill? into the courtyard now. I've got to hide you. Uh, I just moved in. I don't know. Nobody lives here. Like what you stay up in my Where room. do you think he's going to look? He's got to find you gone. What's he going to think if he catches me out here, dancing around in my under drawers? Also, the police, mister. I'm on parole. Good behavior. For this, I can go right smack back into the jail. Shut up. This door is open. So it's open. Who's door? What's it matter? Get in. Psst. Give me my pants. Get in there and shut up. Get in that bed. You, here's some money. Lock the door. Well, I do for you. Shut up. Me understand? Something else I ain't heard in 14 years. Too late. I tell you, I just got here. That's why I haven't seen him. That, that, that's the wrong room. I, I went in there by mistake. Soap lives up in the garret. Should we go see if he's there? There's just a woman. She's in my tank. Go away. Go away, or I'll call the police. Coming back to the party. Party? Oh, yes, your party, Mr. Argarden, of course. Well, first, I think I'd better go upstairs. I'll talk to Jacob Zoo. Well, that's it. Go upstairs and talk to him. I'm shivering. It's cold. There is no heat in this building. And the rent, they charge you. Think? How much will it cost to move for its walk? I owe three weeks. How much? A hundred and fifty marks. Or, or something like that. Mm. Here's a thousand. Thank you, sir. Thank you. There was nobody at home. That's right, nobody. <laughs> so what's funny? <laughs> Old age. Old age. Hey! Hey, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! What did you tell him? Well, we just talked about how cold it is. You, what did he say to you? I just now thought of what we better get out of here, quick. You said that could have anything. Well, of course we can. Anything, anything in the world. You anything. Said that for 14 years I've been dreaming of this. Dreaming in jail, that's all you could do. Well, what is it? A goose liver. Did you say a goose liver? And hot, with mashed potatoes and apples and onion. Merry Christmas! A goose look on Christmas Eve and my usual stack? Never. Leave me alone or equipment. Well, it's no use, Herr George. The hot goose liver, that's the thing with the one day warning. Goose well, very nice. I'll make it something. something. Thank you. If I don't get that goose liver, I'm going home. Well, how about a nice big cut of roast beef? Or maybe a hot stuffed turkey. Goose liver. But look. Our cotton I got this smart enough. Did no one recognize me? Are you sure? Say nothing. Hey. Hey. Hey, come in at me. Get back! Will you keep the door 
door locked. We registered in the hotel under false names, but you can't tell. He may have traced us. I'll give you an hour. Okay. We ain't back by that time. I'll be back. Fresh. Fresh and hot. With mashed potatoes and apples and... Onions. Good luck to me. Hey, mister! Hey, if you hey. don't unlock the door, I'll yell for help. Help! 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 Okay, you win. The door is unlocked. But if you don't behave yourself, there'll be no goose liver. You understand? I'll give you an hour. Could you fix me up with a goose liver? Es tut mir leid. Wir verkaufen keine warmen Speisen. Und übrigens ist heute Weihnachten. What are you doing now? Shopping. Just some shopping. Entschuldigen Sie, mein Herr, Sie können hier nicht parken. You'd better get in, we're blocking the road. Know me at this restaurant. They'll take care of you. Why don't we go in? Why don't you want to be seen with me? Quite a number of people have been seen with you. Braco, for instance. Braco was with you when he died. Sophia Dasco in Mexico. Millie was your girl. Yeah, but... You're a dangerous man to be seen with. Yeah. I guess that's the way you had it planned all along. I knew what I wanted. That's the difference between us. In this world, there are those who give and those who ask, those who do not care to give, those who do not dare to ask. You dare, but you're never quite sure what you're asking for. Now there's nothing more you could hope to beg from me, Manfredo. Not money, certainly not my daughter. Not even your life. Give the gentleman his goose liver. Well, here we are. I finally got it. Wake up, Mr. Zook. Here's what you've been waiting for. Hey, Mr. Zook. Somebody might have run me down in the street. I can't go back to my hotel room in case you've forgotten there's a corpse in there. I haven't. I don't suffer from amnesia. A pity it is a merciful affliction. It might prove useful in your conversations with the police. Go to the cops? About you, Raina's father? Do you think I could do that? <laughs> I no longer think of you at all. You don't think of anything else, not anymore. Just me and yourself and Raina. We're all sort of tied up together, the three of us, aren't we? 
she's what matters. What matters to you is what she thinks of you. Maybe she'd be better off without either one of us. Don't worry, she's safe with me. I don't think anyone is ever safe but blackmail her. Where will you go now? Where I'll be safe. Safe? I've got a seat in the plane, the last seat. Where will you fly to? Spain. You've got a castle in Spain, Mr. Arcade, in a regular fortress. That's where I'll be safe with your daughter. To the airport, quick! Mein Herr, ich habe keinen Befehl von Arcade in orders! Jawohl, mein Herr. Hello, this is Mr. Gregory Arcadin, Secretary here again. I'm sorry, sir. I told you before, there's nothing. We are completely booked up, sir. But you'll simply have to hold that flight, I tell you. Mr. Arcadin is racing to the airport now. He's got to be on that plane. We are completely booked up, sir. This is Christmas. Listen to me. One of the passengers is a Mr. Guy Van Stratton. You must put that man off the plane. He works for Mr. Arcadin. Sir, Mr. Van Stratton has a reservation. Miss, I want to send a telegram, please. Just a moment, please. Mr. Arcadin is one of the leading shareholders in your airline. Sorry, sir, but an airline is a public service. Announcing the departure of flight 16 for Barcelona at Madrid. Oh, did you get my telegram off to Spain yes, for me? Mr. Van Straten, will you please step this way? There's a gentleman waiting to see you. See me? But what about my plane? He promised to give you only a minute. There's nothing at this late hour. I want your seat on that plane. So you can get to talk to Raina before I do? You hired me to buy me off, didn't you? You even thought you could get me to cover up, but you didn't want her to find out. I want that seat. What's your price? Too late. Too many people are dead. Zook's dead in my hotel room. Somebody's gonna have to hang for that. I don't want it to be me. If you do see her first, what makes you think she'll believe you? That she has my story? She'll hear my story first, Arcade. Too bad, Mr. Arcade. I wish I could help, but... I'm gonna be on that plane! Listen to me, everybody! I must have a seat on that plane! I will pay anything. I'll give you a check now. A pair of dollars, any currency, 50 million marks for a seat on that plane. My name is Gregory Arcadi. Yeah, and I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> a pair of dollars, any currency. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Something. If it's so important, why shouldn't you really tell me? Why pretend? Why? Well, I can't go to the cops. They'll be coming after me. <laughs> so that's what you're in such a flap about. The cops, your father. If he thinks I've talked to you, no, he can't lay a hand on me without proving to you that it's true. But why use me to trick him? Because you're all he really cares about. You and what you think of him. What are you trying to do? Break his heart? I want to save my life, right? Senorita, I really think you'd better come now. My daughter! I want to speak to my daughter! We don't know his exact position. He's alone, playing himself in a chartered plane. He's been on the radio for quite a while now, asking to talk to me. He sounds... 
Well, you better speak to him yourself. I want to talk to her. My daughter. I want to speak to my daughter. Yes, Father. Have you seen that Stratton? Yes, tell him yes. 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 Yes, just now. How can he talk to you? Refuse to listen. I beg you, I wait. Tell him it's too late. Too late. It's too late. Saved your precious life for you. I had to kill my father to do it. Is there anything else you want from me? Want to know the real truth? He was... He was capable of anything. Once a long time ago, he was something less than Mr. Arkadin. That's what he couldn't stand having you know about. That he was once something like me. That's why that plane is flying around up there, empty. I might as well have thrown him out with my own hands. He would have done it to you. You sure she wouldn't rather be alone? No, but I would. Yes, I suppose. Of course, it is rather awful, but to tell the truth... Rather that... awful? No, I mean, she loved him well enough. But the way he felt about it, well, it wasn't healthy. So perhaps it's just as well. She's better off without him. Yeah, better off without me, too. Rather awful. What did you say? Losing the girl I love, a beautiful girl who loved me, just inherited a hundred million bucks. Rather awful. Maybe you ought to find a better word. Go on, beat it, your lordship. I might just forget myself and take a punch right at your nose. Oh, yes? And you might get punched back, too, you know? Yeah, I know. That's why I'd rather be alone. What are you going to do now? Drive you into town. I'll do the driving. 